Scott Frost was officially fired as the head football coach at Nebraska. Now, there are a lot of different things that you can go into about this. Uh, the fact that the buyout drops on October 1st, or would have dropped on October 1st, from $15 million down to $7.5 million, you had to get through two more games with Scott Frost as the head coach. And, and maybe this is a bit uh, financially egregious to do this. This is just waving it in everybody's face that, hey, we have money. We have all the money. We can do whatever we want to do with this. Uh, it, it does maybe send out a signal to other coaches that, hey, we've got enough money here. We are going to spend. We are willing to spend if you guys can come in and make this a legitimate college football job. If you can make us a contender, we are willing to spend the money in order to do that. Now, there's the other side of this that, it's Scott Frost is a native son. He played at Nebraska. He did all of these amazing things as a player here. We don't want there to be hard feelings, so we're not going to make him wait in the wind for three more weeks. Uh, two more games, because there was a bye week in there, but three more weeks, and, and just leave him out there because everybody knows that this is done, right? Uh, there's the other side of this that maybe you do, as an athletic director, and the rest of the coaching staff, you do believe in these players. You do think that there's a chance that they could salvage the season and that Scott Frost was the problem, right? Maybe that's the situation. Um, and let's, let's go on and pull this up. Uh, Ravi Lula, that was on the show last week, talked about it. He said a lot of people wondered why I was so adamant that Frost wasn't going to turn it around, and it's because I started hearing things like this fairly regularly. It's also why I was convinced the root problem was accountability from the top down. This thing is broken beyond repair. Now, I, I'm going to play this. Uh, it's Herd at Sports. All right, go and check them out at H-U-R-R-D-A-T Sports. At Listen to their interview with uh, Michael Severe. Now, I, I hope that's how you pronounce the name um, because all, all I've done is listen to... Um, <laughs> all I've done is listen to the interview, and it is it, he hits on a lot of points here. I mean, it's really, really important stuff as to why Scott Frost was fired here. That There's so much. If somebody really wants to write a book about this tenure, it would be, first of all, it would allow Trev to walk away and go, this is why. Because he can't talk about that stuff. Right. He can't talk about his head coach being late for practice every day. He can't talk about his head coach not making recruiting phone calls. He can't talk about it. And I can talk about it, you know, because it's over. But there's a whole bunch of stuff. There was a mess up there. It was an absolute. You had assisting coaches going to the athletic department and saying, the AD and going, hey, this is happening. Help us. That should not happen. You should not have to have your assistant coaches complaining about your head coach because he's not doing what he wants to, what's supposed to be doing. That's an issue. And so hopefully somebody writes all that down and puts it in a little book and sells it. Um, so that'll make, that way Trev can go. It wasn't about the losses. It was about everything. Right. This guy was not, for whatever reason, committed to doing what he was supposed to do as the head coach in Nebraska. I don't know why. I don't know why. But he hasn't been. And I'm talking, not just talking about this year after they forced him to make changes. I'm talking about the, every year he's been in here. Every year he's been here, it's been stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and if you want to go around, there's stories all over the all over Lincoln about things that he did or didn't do that he was supposed to. This is this is a lack of commitment on his part. He wanted to be the head coach. He wanted to make the money, but the commitment to everything else was not there. And that is a distinct problem. Now it does make you wonder about uh, these guys that start off because uh, remember he came to Nebraska coming off of a giant. 12 and 0 season at Central Florida, how much of his, well, 13 and 0, excuse me, uh, they claimed a national title. They did all these different things. Like he, and his career skyrocketed because he had a, a brief NFL stint, uh, was a wide receivers coach at Oregon, then became the OC for one season, then got the head coaching job at UCF, and in two years took them to an undefeated regular season and a big time New Year's Six bowl win over Auburn, right? All of this happened so fast. When you get to your dream job, where you went to school, and you are the head guy, and you are in charge of turning that thing around, it maybe, it, and we're not. It's not an ego thing necessarily, but maybe 
it came so easily at UCF that you didn't believe that you had to commit to all these different things, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm curious about that. I, the whole thing, and this, this brings up a very interesting point, uh, over on Reddit, right? And I know some of you laugh at me for checking out Reddit, but my gosh, they are, they are on top of this stuff. Uh, this is something that I was actually trying to put together, and I talked to uh, Ravi about this last week. AAC coaches, when you have more talent than the other teams in that conference, there is a huge disparity. Uh, in G5 conferences between the haves and the have-nots, sometimes even more so than in Power 5 conferences. But when you look, Tom Herman went 22-4 and four at Houston and then went 32-18 and 18 at Texas, and it didn't work. He got fired. Josh Heupel, UCF 28-8, and eight. he's already got six losses at Tennessee. Now, yes, it's a different world, but he's, he's doing okay at Tennessee, but we'll see. Mike Norvell at Memphis, 38-15. and 15. So far, he is 10-13 and 13 at Florida State. Scott Frost, 19 and 7 at Central Florida. He went 16 and 31 at Nebraska. Chad Morris, same thing. Now at SMU, it took him a little while to build it. Uh, and he didn't reach like the super highs of winning a conference or anything like that, but 14 and 22. And then he went to Arkansas and went 4 and 18. Temple, for Matt Rule, 28 and 23. He went 19 and 20 at Baylor. Now, yes, he did build up Baylor, and that was a little bit of a different issue, but he went 19 and 20 overall. It wasn't an immediate turnaround. Willie Taggart, uh, South Florida, 24 and 25 overall. He goes to Oregon for one year, 7 and 5, goes to Florida State, and he's 9 and 12. Jeff Collins, Temple, 15 and 10, goes to Georgia Tech, he's 10 and 26. Sonny Dykes at SMU. Now, the book is still out on this one. Now, Sonny Dykes did not do so well at Cal before that. Remember, he went G5, P5, and then back to G5, and now back to P5. And so that's going to be an interesting one. Justin Fuente at Memphis, 26 and 23, and he built that thing up. He had two terrible years, then won the conference, and then had a really good season the next year. And uh, and then at Virginia Tech, 43 and 31, and ended up fired. Uh, I mean, just ridiculous. So four out of 10, like if you toss in Virginia Tech there. But man, uh, it's tough because in AAC world, it's different. You can just out recruit guys. You can out-recruit other teams, and you can just win based on talent. You don't have to know about scheme. You don't necessarily have to be committed to the daily grind, right? Uh, you do at these Power 5 schools, at the Big Ten and SEC and whatnot. So uh, so we'll move on. Uh, we did talk about some of the coaching candidates, etc. last week. Uh, Lars Anderson says, News, I've never claimed to be a breaking news person, but here we go. Iowa State head coach Matt Campbell is the primary target of Nebraska AD Trev Albert. Sources tell me it is highly expected that Campbell will eventually be the next head coach of Husker football. Uh, okay. Like, yeah, this is this is interesting. Like, I, I fully believe it, and, and Robbie told us this last week. He thinks that Matt Campbell is the guy. And we'll see, but man, uh, very. I'm, I'm just I'm interested to see what they're going to be able to do because they have shown that they are willing to spend the money. Who can they draw? Right? Does Urban Meyer want to take a look at this? I don't know that I would necessarily recommend that, but I mean, at this point, you got to find somebody that's willing to build a culture, and that's what we're looking for. That's what Nebraska fans are looking for. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.